Howdy. After big SEC games against Arkansas, Mississippi State, and the Crimson Tide at the University of Alabama, the Texas A&M football team is on the road this week as they travel to Oxford, Mississippi, to take on the Rebels of Ole Miss. The fighting Texas Aggie man is not going to make this long road trip, but we've got a complete broadcast for you. In fact, we have a halftime drill of the Aggie band that most of you have not seen unless you were in the freezing cold temperatures of Memphis, Tennessee during the Liberty Bowl in December of 2014. We also have our weekly cadet report and two new feature stories about Texas A&M University. And now on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brewhouse, as we celebrate this, our 20. First consecutive season of broadcast, this is the Texas Aggie Band Show. We begin each broadcast with our weekly cadet report, and this week we're joined by another cadet correspondent. He is Josh Simon, fighting Texas Aggie Band, class of 2016. This segment features the latest news about a student in the Corps Cadets who has a special story to share. The Dwight Lick College of Engineering at Texas A&M University has long been known for producing many noticeable graduates that have gone on to great success in their professional lives. Yet the start of any successful career in engineering is often established in the training and education received right here on campus. So too has it been for our guest this week, a cadet who recently competed with a team that won a major competition. While this may not seem unique, what is special is that the team's winning entry is destined for use on the International Space Station. Let's meet J.C. Park, Class of 2017. I was most interested in attending Texas A&M University because, well, one, being in Texas and wanting to come back to Texas, it was pretty much limited to two schools. We won't talk about the other one, but I'm most interested in Texas A&M University because I started as a biomedical science major, and with those, there's only six in the nation, and Texas A&M had the top premier biomedical science institution. I was drawn to the Corps of Cadets because when I originally came here, I was interested in commissioning. However, uh, after some other decisions, I decided to re retain my membership in the Corps of Cadets, mostly to develop my leadership skills and my abilities within there, learning that the character and traits were something that I wanted to be a part of, and the Fight in Texas Aggie Band was the spirit that really carried this university forward. I completed one year as a biomedical science major and then switched over to electrical systems engineering technology, and uh, it was mostly out of my discovery for when I completed in high school uh, biomedical sciences program, I had previously thought that my interest was invested in biomedical science, but after completing a capstone project in that program, I realized that engineering was more of the side that I was interested in. I had the difficult choice of deciding whether or not I would attend the first game of the season or go to the Aggies Invent program. And since the Aggies Invent program also had three other weekend options, I figured that the first game, given that especially it wasn't a home game, was was the one weekend that I would choose to do this program over going to the game. And I actually had the support of my directors and my fellow cadets, and they, they decided that this was the best option for me. Aggies Invent is a program sponsored by the Dwight College of Engineering that presents students an opportunity to solve industry problems. There was 19 need statements at this past Aggies Invent, and there were 60 members or 60 students that were invited to attend the event. And so students come, they, they are presented with those challenges, they form a team, and they ultimately, within the 48 hours that they're given, present an industry solution to the problem. Thanks to Cadet Park for joining us this week. Each week at this time, we will have a trivia question about the Aggie Band or A&M. Below is the seventh question for the season brought to you each week by our sponsors, the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the broadcast. Thanks to Josh for joining us this week, and Josh will join us again in the broadcast right after these messages from our sponsors, and we'll bring you our first feature story about the Rally to the Guidons held the weekend of the Alabama game. As has been the tradition for many decades, before every home football game at Kyle Field, the entire Corps of Cadets parades in and marches around the field to the celebration of their family and friends before kickoff. 
As has been the tradition, though, for the last seven years, the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association has held a rally to the guidons, bringing former members of the Corps Cadets back to revive this tradition and help build esprit de corps with the current members of the Corps Cadets. The seventh annual rally to the guidons was held Friday and Saturday, October 16th and 17th, 2015, on the Texas A&M University campus. The festivity started Friday, October 16th, at the Sanders Corps Cadet Center with early check-in. Over 100 participants came and enjoyed the Corps Center's displays, as well as an address by the Corps Cadets Association Director, Don Crawford, Class 64, Commandant of the Corps, General Joe Ramirez, Class of 79, and the Corps Commander, Alyssa Mahalke, Class of 16. The rally to the guidons on Saturday was the largest rally to date, with 650 former cadets registering to attend. The objective of the rally of the guidons is to build esprit de corps, between former Corps of Cadets members and current cadets. The participants met at Duncan Dining Center Saturday morning and were able to visit and reestablish old friendships while they waited for the signal to form up into blocks on the quad. The 2015 rally proudly honored our Texas Aggie Korean and World War II veterans. Edward Cumby, class of 43. James Melson, class of 44. William Pritchard, class of 44. Harry Swafford, class of 44. Raymond Garlington, class of 46, Edward Mitchell, class of 46. Each of them were in the lead of the honor block. The 2015 rally also enjoyed having the first ever female block composed of over 50 former female cadets, a legacy block of over 100 former cadets marching with family members. Blocks composed solely of cadets from the class of 1971 and the class of 1974 and blocks composed of former cadets who were members of Squadron 5 and Squadron 8. The remaining blocks were composed of former cadets from the classes all the way up to the class of 2015 that just left the Corps last spring. The oldest former cadet was Ed Crumby, class of 43, and the youngest cadets were Sundown Hunter, Ian Kettlecamp, and Ryan Smith, all class of 2015. We asked Chris Sullivan, a and class of 98, who's a member of the Corps Cadet Association staff and the current president of the Texas Aggie Band Association to join us and give us an overview of the Rally to the Guidons. Yeah, the Rally to the Guidons, uh, as far as I'm aware, started about seven years ago. I believe it was 2008 and uh, was the first year. I really have only been involved with it for about the past three years when I became involved with the Corps Cadets Association. Uh, this year was the first year that we were able to have an, a band block. Um, and so we were really excited about that, and we just hope that that continues to grow in the future. So each year we have a specific shirt that we design for, for the rally, and so each year uh, as part of the registration fee, everybody gets their own uh, shirt, and, and mainly just because uh, we want everybody to look the same, just like the Corps Cadets uh, as their own uh, uniforms. We want to have our own uniform each year. We were really excited this year with the uh, participation of the former bandsmen that came back, and, and to the extent that we were able to form a band block this year, and, and we got a lot of interest, and I got a lot of questions as far as wanting to actually play next year as part of Rally to the Guidons, and we'd love to do that. If we can get somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 former bandsmen to come back, I think I could probably pitch that to uh, Dr. Ray and, and Colonel Brewer, and, and we might be able to do that going forward. The Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association would like to thank the 30 members of their organization that showed up to help make this event come off without a hitch, as well as the Commandant's Office who gave them assistance and the financial assistance given to them by USAA. And now here are some sights and sounds from the Rally of the Guidons 2015 and the march in before the Texas A&M Alabama football game at Kyle Field. Upon arriving at Texas A&M University, the faculty, the staff, the students, and visitors often come upon a stately structure that faces to the east, and it is known as the Administration Building. In the fall of 1933, the Administration Building opened its magnificent grower doors and housed nearly all of the administrative offices of the Agriculture and Mechanical College of Texas. Included were the Printing and Publicity Offices, the Registrar's Office, the Fiscal Department, the Commandant's Office, the Orderly Room, and the Branch College's Office, the president had his offices on the third floor, along with those of the dean of the college, the dean of arts and sciences, the dean of agriculture, and the dean of vocational training. The building included the faculty room and the offices of all student publications. The largest user of space taking the entire fourth floor was the Texas Forest Service. In addition, office space was set aside for the Association of Former Students. 
The placement and arrangement of the administration building marked a major departure for Texas A&M because it meant that their front door was no longer facing to the west and the railroad tracks where most of the cadets arrived at, but towards the east and the newly completed Highway 6. And so Texas A&M turned its front door, its welcoming, to the east side with the creation of the administration building. Designed by F. E. Gusecki, Texas A&M class of 1886, this building was built for the entire cost of three hundred and sixty three thousand dollars. Sam Vosper was also an architect on the job and it really his design that set the tone for this beautiful building that graces the front of the Texas A&M campus. The late architect and authority on campus architecture Ernest Langford class of 13 saw Sam Vosper's design of the administration building as the most spectacular on campus. Langford was happy with the exterior but when it came to the interior design however Langford believed that Vosper had pulled out all the stops Vosper's treatment of the walls, the main stairway, pilasters, ceiling, and floors were unequaled in any campus structure. His attention to detail is especially apparent in the highly ornate island lighting fixture above the main lobby. A. Orth, superintendent of the construction of campus buildings, was featured. This was not the first time Vosper had worked her face into a design. Her likeliness was used extensively on the main floor of the Cushing Memorial Library. While Sam Vosper did an outstanding job on the exterior look of this building, it was on the interiors where he really did his most magnificent work. In fact, when you come into the main lobby, you'll see a dramatic 12-foot diameter map of the state of Texas that has all the historical features, including Washington on the Brazos, the El Camino Real Trail, and other features of the history of the state of Texas depicted in Terrazzo and Brass. It's an outstanding example of the way he paid attention to the smallest details, and the craftsmanship in the 1930s is of the finest quality. The location of the building was an advantage to the university in creating a grand approach. Coming to the campus from the highway, one literally drives up to the main entrance toward this very imposing structure. To strengthen the feeling of an upward movement, Vosper added sloping sidewalks and a long flight of front steps leading to the main floor. The architect and archivist Ernest Langford, class of 13, described a view of the building in his notes as follows. 14 freestanding, modified, ionic columns set the scale of the building, a scale which is increased in the height by a deep underplature and a third story. The administration building is an outstanding example of Mr. Vosper's ability. Looking at the building, it is hard to imagine that a designer who could do the Animal Industries building at A&M could reverse his design approach and complete a thoroughly classic example as this. Mr. Vosper did away from the exterior decorative ornament of extraneous decorative tile patterns and most of the animal heads and figures, and focused instead on the treatment of interior walls, the main stairway, pilasters, ceilings, and floors. All of this is done with a meticulous degree of detail, especially the island lighting fixture in the main lobby, and finished in colors ranging from deep blue to gold. Through the years, Aggies have known this building by a lot of different names, and in fact, when the Texas A&M system was set up in 1948, it was simply called the Systems Administration Building. But in 1997, the Board of Regents decided to name this building after a former president who served with distinction from 1970 to 1977, the late Dr. Jack K. Williams. Unfortunately, a lot of Aggies that come on campus don't take time to come see this building. It is a marvelous piece of architecture. And the next time you're here on campus, I encourage you to stop by and see this beautiful piece of architecture that dates from the Depression in the 1930s. Howdy. I am Joshua Simon from College Station, Texas, majoring in environmental geosciences. On behalf of the senior class of 2016, here now is a halftime drill of the Fighting Texas Aggie Band at the Texas A&M University versus the West Virginia Liberty Bowl.
Thanks for watching our broadcast. On the screen now is the answer to this week's trivia question that's brought to you by our sponsors, the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association. When we come to you next, Texas A&M returns home to Kyle Field. They'll be taking on a Eastern Division foe from the SEC, and it'll be their interdivision rival every year, the Gamecocks of the University of South Carolina, who come calling for the first time ever to College Station. The Fighting Texas Aggie Band will step out with their seventh new drill of the year and will bring you complete coverage of their halftime performance. We'll have another new weekly cadet report and feature stories about Texas A&M. And now on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, as we celebrate this, our 21st consecutive season broadcast, this has been the Texas Aggie Band Show.